Roy Anderson said, revival is the life of the Lord Jesus poured into human hearts. A man called Palmer said that revival is when God kisses earth. It's a time of refreshing, a time of renewal. It's when eternity is brought to bear upon time. Reading revival accounts left me with this question, of what can be done to spark revival today? They began to talk to me about the 1859 revival and the ministry of W.P. Nicholson and some of the incredible stories that came out of those revival movements. Greetings. Hello, just great to see you. This is probably the most significant place in the whole revival story. This is where the four young men came every Friday night to meet together to pray. So huge was the impact of this revival that the town bought a Bible. There was a lot of people wanting Bibles, and many of the ordinary, everyday magazines and things that were on sale, there was no real demand for them anymore. And when he came home in 1899, he was really godless, but his mother prayed for him, prayed earnestly. And one morning, conviction came over him. And before the mother came home, he was on his knees, weeping his heart out because of the sense of sin and the burden, the guilt of sin. And he trusted Christ as Savior in his own home. Being convinced that I am a sinner, I now accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior and promise in humble dependence on the Holy Spirit to confess him as my Lord and this lady signed her name. People said he would have done better if he had been more polished and didn't use such rough language as his preaching, but then that wouldn't have been W.P. Nicholson. A revival is not a two-week series of meetings. A revival is a movement of God the Holy Spirit. I just wanted God. There was this um, desire not to hinder revival. There was a spirit of prayer on this place that was so unique. And out of that revival, we had five prayer meetings a week that broke out. All the glory goes to God. This recent trip to Ireland provoked me to believe God for bigger and better things in our day.